Hi, my name is Masha, I'm the blonde from Coding Blonde, and I hope you guys are ready to be inspired because I have an incredible guest today. Her name is Robin, she's an amazing woman, a computer scientist, and a software engineer. She's a total badass, one of the co-founders of the Programmer Toolbox podcast, together with Catherine from Blondie Bites, and is also on the board of directors for Autism Speaks. And since our interview, she has accepted and started a position at Google. Did I mention she's a badass? So yes, she is very inspiring and I can't wait to share her journey with you guys. Let's get to the interview. Hi Robin, how are you? Hey Masha, I'm good, how are you? I'm doing great, thank you so much. And thank you so much for coming on my channel. I'm super excited to have you. Yeah, my pleasure, thanks for having me. So I wanted to ask you about your journey, about how you got to where you got right now. Was it a straight path? Was it, um, did it have twists and turns? How was it? How did you get to where you are right now? So I was returning to school to finish my undergrad in math and I took a course in intro to computing or intro to computer science in um, C programming language. And I was just taking it to fulfill a math requirement and was going to you know, move on with my life, finish this degree. And I fell in love with the subject and knew you know, I wanted to be doing it the rest of my life. So I immediately jumped in, took some more courses and uh, applied to the master's program at my school and started a couple days after graduating. From there, it was really a bumpy road because it just, it really wasn't a, a place that was inclusive of people who were different. So there were a lot of obstacles I had to navigate, but after that, I found it's been relatively smooth sailing. It just, the hardest part was right after I finished my degree, no one wants to hire someone without work experience. Like no one values only the degree. The degree means nothing by itself. So it was really hard to just get those first interviews. No one wanted to even interview you. Um, so it was a little bit disappointing, but once you have experience under your belt, it's relatively easy to, you know, find your way. Yeah, that's that's so true. It's pretty sad that a lot of employers, and it's not just in the tech world, they assume that you will have three years of work experience straight after graduating. And for <laughs> fresh grads, it's so difficult yeah. um, to navigate that situation. But when it came to... Um, when it came to that decision process, what was your thinking behind it? You know, when choosing what direction to take and everything and, you know, how to navigate this situation where you didn't have the experience that was required. However, yeah, you wanted a job. Yeah. Um, so I got really lucky and made my way into the interview um, system of Facebook and before you knew it, I was at the final rounds of interviews and they flew me out and it was an honor to be there. It was so exciting. Unfortunately, I didn't get the job, but from there it was like, what, what do I do now? Because I really had put my eggs in one basket. I was really hoping that that would work out. So I came across this company called Florio Tech and they create virtual reality applications that provide uh, learning experience for children on the autism spectrum and I was just blown away because um, I'm on the spectrum myself so I was like this is really amazing work uh, they were looking for an Android developer which was really what my direction was um, I really wanted to be doing Android and Java and I was you know passionate so that was really how I bridged the gap from no experience to being considered was I believe in what you're doing. I would love to be a part of it. And it took a long time and a lot of interviews, but you know, before you knew it, I was working for the company um, on a three-month three internship. And it was an amazing experience. That's awesome. I love it how you have filled that gap, like you said, with passion and with the fact that you really care about this subject. And yeah, it's, it's wonderful. And were there challenging times along the way, um, and how do they make you stronger? Um, challenging, you would say, at, um, when I was in the workplace or when I was trying to get my first? 
either either or along your journey i would say actually the the most challenging part was when i was in school still um i received disability accommodations and most of my professors just didn't understand how that worked and would try to deny me them and as a result i would be in this position where i could potentially fail out of school because i wasn't getting my disability accommodations so it was so disheartening because um, no one else had ever gone through the program and been in that situation or even gone through the program as a disability student so i really had to create a path so that other people after me could then you know venture on and complete their program as well and not go through what i went through so um although it was really difficult it was really just a lot of standing up for myself and saying no i don't tolerate that and that's a violation of federal law <laughs> which i felt awful saying because it sounds so mean to have to remind people that but you know it's crazy or the real crazy thing is that i had to remind people that so um, when I left the program, I made sure to get some policy in place that would require disability um, students who, uh, sorry, professors of disability students to undergo training so that they no longer, you know, do those things. And they'll be told, you can't deny them their disability accommodations. There's no exceptions. So, you know, I'm hoping that, you know, one day it'll be a brighter place for someone who, you know, might be in my situation. That's amazing. I mean, that it's super sad that these things are not accommodated for, but it's amazing that you had the power to stand up to speak out for yourself. And I don't know, I see it almost as um, we have these, I don't know, I don't know how to say this uh, word in English, to be honest, but uh, in Russia, these boats are pretty, I guess, it's kind of like a metaphor for um, the first person and going through an experience. These boats that are in uh, very cold conditions that have to literally break the ice, you know, like icebreakers, I guess, but yeah. wait, as an icebreaker, is that a boat? You know, I never thought about that, but it might be. Maybe. But yeah, <laughs> but yeah basically, that's, that's kind of a way to pave the way for the rest. And it's very hard to be the first one. But once you do it, you feel stronger and you lead the way for the rest. That's wonderful. Thank you. And that actually leads me to the next question. What is your superpower? So I would say my superpower is actually my... Um, ability to communicate information to people. I'm always very aware of the other person's experience. So I'm very aware whether or not someone else would know certain terminology and based on that, where they would fit in and what I'd need to explain in order to catch them up to explain the thing I really want to talk about. And it allows me to, you know, teach people very easily but also convey information, whether in like a professional or educational setting, regardless to anyone. So um, I you know, use that to really bridge the gap when like I'm trying to explain something to someone who's not on the engineering team. And it really makes my life easy. That is super important. Thank you. A lot of the times we get caught up in this curse of knowledge yeah. We assume that other people know what we know and it's just difficult. That creates a barrier between us and them because they don't understand what you're talking about. And especially when it comes to the technology world, there's so many things and concepts and terminologies that are confusing and people don't understand them straight away. Yeah. Absolutely. That is definitely a very, very important superpower. Thank you. And what is your next adventure? Hmm. So I really want to dive full into doing mentoring, tutoring through Skype. I've started meeting with a, uh, with a client already and I kind of had to put it on hold while I was um, going through some personal things. But once I get all set up and um, feel like I have all of my materials ready to go 
Um, I'm really going to dive into that. I'm super excited about it. That's that's amazing because mentoring feels so good and it almost feels like, yeah, giving back because you are sharing your experience and making someone's life much better. And since, especially since you are planning to go on this mentoring journey, maybe you have some recommendations and tips for people who, and especially women, who are hoping to design their own lives and build their own paths what would you recommend for them to focus on or maybe you know the mentality for them to have along this kind of experience what would you recommend for them i would say it's important to find allies everywhere you are that your success depends on your ability to find your circle of influence if you want to call it that and have them help you get to the place that you want to be at. No one goes at this alone. I'm here today because my first professor inspired me so much and then helped me, you know, apply to the program, gave me advice, got me in touch with all the right people. Um, and I'm also here because of all the other people who have helped me and supported me, whether it be, you know, a significant other or even a therapist. And, um, that's really where you're going to succeed is if you find the people first who have done what you want to do so they can give you the exact advice that you want and then you know you need the person who's going to provide you emotional support and um you know you might also need to ask for help from you know parents or family members because you might need some financial support because you're going to be learning a lot and you might not be able to take on a full-time job if you really want to commit to this that is a great tip because yeah it's all about your support network and finding allies and finding people who will help you along the way is so so important thank you so so much robin this was unbelievably inspiring and i'm very excited to share your story with my viewers thank you so much masha it was a pleasure being on here thank you thank you so much robin for sharing your story with my viewers and for all of that incredible advice you are a total badass and I can't wait to see what's next for you. Guys, if you'd like to learn more about Robin and follow her journey, you can do so on Instagram, at Programmer. The active link will be in the description along with a link to the Programmer Toolbox, the podcast that Robin has co-founded with Catherine from Blondie Bites. I will also leave a link to some videos that I've done together with Robin and with Catherine in this corner. Please let me know what you thought about this video in the comments, like this video if you've enjoyed it, and press that subscribe button if you're not yet subscribed to my YouTube channel. And you can also find me on other social media at Coding Blonde. Have a wonderful time of the day you're currently experiencing. Bye.